Hello and welcome to the CBS Sports College Basketball YouTube page. I'm Kyle Boone, college basketball writer at CBS Sports. With me today, the one, the only, Mr. Cover 3 himself doing a little crossover with me, Chip Patterson, the chipster, the chip magnet. And we're going to break down several regions of the NCAA tournament bracket now that we do have a bracket. And today we're going to start with the East region. We will also do the West region. Our colleagues, Adam Finkelstein and David Cobb, will handle the Midwest and the South. So I encourage you to check that out on the YouTube page. Chipopotamus, great to see you, my friend. It's been a long time uh, since I've seen your pretty face, but always happy to see you around. Officially means uh, that March is here. How are we doing? Strong jaw. It feels good. You know, I'm just sitting here talking with you. I got the, here on YouTube. We got this lovely hardwood, uh, you know, theme inspired here. So I, I just, I, I've, I've got it, man. It's just, just, just knowing that anytime you can just sort of just like pull the, it's like a lawnmower. You go, you know, you just kind of, you know, you just kind of pull it up. And, yeah. Just kind of like right there. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's 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 flowing through my blood, ready to break it on down with you. God, feels so good. Feels so good to have a bracket. Um, we're going to jump right into it. Let's go straight to the East region. This is the region that everyone probably cares the most about uh, because UConn is the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament bracket, the number one seed in the East region. Iowa State, the number two seed in the East. Illinois is the three seed. Auburn, the four seed. San Diego State, the five seed. Uh, let's just run through it here with some kind of high-level storylines we need to know, fans need to know, heading into this bracket. Um, I will start here, and then I'll, I'll put you on the spot. I think the obvious storyline is, is, number one, UConn, looking to repeat as champions. Uh, UConn could be the first team since Florida in 2007 to go back-to-back -back after winning it last year. Uh, look at the betting market. The Huskies are plus 400 to win the national championship. That makes them the national championship front runner, the favorite. No surprise if you've watched UConn this season, but there's a lot of good teams. Uh, to me, that is one of the biggest storylines in this entire bracket. And of course, we're breaking that in the East region. So um, yeah, you, what's your uh, what's your favorite high level storyline kind of to keep an eye out in this region? UConn got screwed. UConn yeah. got absolutely hosed. I'm working on my annual story right now about best team each seed line, and let's play a little game. Uh, number one seed, best team on that seed line, I think it's UConn. They're in the East. Yeah. Number two, best team on that seed line, I think it's Iowa State. They're in mm. the East. Number three, best team on that seed line, I think it is the Big Ten champion, Illinois fighting Illini. And the number four seed that I think is the best on that seed line is the team that is currently rated fourth of all the teams over at yeah. Ken Palm and the predictive metrics, that would be the Auburn, Tar Auburn Tigers. So the one, the two, the three, the four, I think the absolute best team on each of those respective seed lines all exist in this bracket. And that is not the treatment that the number one overall seed is supposed to get. We talked a lot, or it's not we, but you know, everyone talked a lot about the Iowa State of it all. Yeah. But to me, the fact that you know last year, you could argue some bracket luck, right? I mean, UConn walked into the Final Four. They smashed everybody on the way to the Final Four. But you're like, okay, you got FAU, you got San Diego State, you've got Miami. Like, you know, it it didn't feel like they had to conquer any Goliaths on the way. You know, very hungry Huskies kind of vibes. If UConn does get through this region, it will be deserved. It would be the yeah. exact opposite of what we saw in terms of the bracket luck side of it all, because this is a this is a monster. The the, the East is a beast, and um, I, it makes it compelling for me. But I think UConn yeah. got screwed. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. Uh, Adi Joseph, who, who's our managing editor, uh, kind of said as much. It's like, man, if if UConn obviously they get the number one overall seed, but the draw that they get in the East is absolutely brutal. Iowa State in this region. Um, Auburn in this region, BYU as, as a six seed in this region. Like, oh my gosh, this is this is really, really brutal uh, for, for the Huskies. I, I went through it, kind of analyzed my bracket, and I don't want to spoil anything, but it's really hard to talk yourself out of picking UConn, even despite the, the tough draw. Um, but yeah, if they get to the Final Four and they win the national championship, they will absolutely uh, have deserved it. To me, my, my second storyline to keep an eye on in this in this specific region ship it's number two seed iowa state and 
you mentioned you think that they're the best number two seed in this entire bracket. They were the number eight overall team, according to the selection committee. That stunned me. I actually thought Iowa State had the best case to be the fourth and final number one seed. Uh, they were nearly a three seed uh, when the bracket was revealed. So surprised a little bit that the committee had them as eighth overall, the last two seed, had them as a one seed. But yeah, that means you know UConn would have a potentially tough draw in the Elite Eight with the Cyclones uh, against a team that I think you could have reasonably made the case uh, could have been a number one seed in this bracket. Yeah, I I would say that my uh, the the other thing that stands out to me, uh, particularly when we're looking at uh, the way this thing shapes is shaking out. Um, number one, how about three of the four Final Four teams from last year all in the top half yeah. of this bracket? You know, UConn, FAU, San Diego State. FAU, a little bit of a curious decision at the eight seed, uh, without a doubt. But San Diego State, uh, I think, is absolutely lurking right there, where uh, if you see them get all the way to the Sweet 16, that is going to be a fascinating rematch that we would get yes. of last year's title game. So uh, I like the Final Four love that we have right here uh, in the East region. Yeah, I like that. I like that. San Diego State is the five, I think, is mighty, mighty interesting. It's the highest seeded team in the Mountain West. The six bid Mountain West to you. Um, Utah State was the eight seed. Um, Boise State, Nevada, Colorado State earned 10 seeds. New Mexico, an 11 seed. Obviously, not all in this region, but uh, let's move to the top half of this bracket, Chipper. Um, and if you're following along with us on YouTube, get your bracket out, follow along. Um, or wherever you're listening, uh, you can go, you know, kind of pick by pick through us here. Um, you can fade us, you can follow us, do whatever you want to do. Um, let's just read off the matchups in the, in the top half of this bracket. Number one seed UConn gets number 16 Stetson. Number eight seed Florida Atlantic gets number nine seed Northwestern. Number five San Diego State gets number 12 seed UAB. And number four seed Auburn gets number 13 seed Yale chip. What do you think about that? Which team or teams do you think is kind of overseeded, underseeded um, in this specific pod? Any teams that kind of stand out to you in particular? To me, I think I'll start, I'll go, I'll go with FAU. Um, it feels like they probably didn't deserve an NCAA tournament bid, but also feels weird that they were an eight seed um, because an eight seed in the region with the number one overall seed. Uh, you're, you're putting a, a final four team from last year in, in the same pod in the same region. That's really, really tough. They weren't very consistent this season. Uh, still feels like a brutal draw. I mean, this team brought pretty much everyone back. They have Dusty May um, and, you know, they could face potentially UConn in the second round. Just wild to think about any, any underseeded or overseeded teams for you that stood, stood out in the top half of this bracket. Is over or under? I don't, which one means that you are like lower or higher than you should be along the way? I I, I sometimes yeah. get get the over or under seated, but in the top half, the two that stand out. So FAU, absolutely. There was a discussion when they got bounced from the American Athletic Conference tournament as to whether they would even you know be able to stand up the scrutiny of an at-large bid and for them to yeah. not only not be in Dayton, to not only not be a double-digit seed, but to be all the way up there at the eight. But, you know, I mean, uh, listen, I I don't know if we're just rolling through, but, I mean, they got to play Boo Booey. I, I don't think we're going to be seeing the Owls hooty hooting anytime. So, like, come on, man. You're going, <laughs> up against, you're going up against Mr. Clutch, Boo Booey? No, Mr. sir. Mr. Northwestern, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, they're facing Northwestern. Um, San Diego State UAB, reminder, Andy Kennedy is the head coach there for the Blazers, and he had them yeah. playing well down near the end of the, the end of the season. Um, Auburn Yale is the one in the top half where I think we've got that feast or famine. You know, I I sometimes in college football in the Cover Three podcast, I've, I've got a saying about a game where I say alt line or money line. And for those who aren't like well versed in the degenerate world, that would basically say either the favorite is going to win by a whole bunch or they're going to lose and get upset. And it feels like Auburn's either going to win by 15 points or they're going to lose outright. And we might not have yeah. any in between with, you know, Yale being uh, very, very uh, capable. But, I mean, what 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 does Yale have for John Ibrew? I mean, you know, the, no, there's nothing. nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. as long as Broom is, you know, playing 75%, 
of what he has been, which is being one of the best players in the entire country, a big man who we'd talk about more if it weren't for the presence of one Zachary Eady. And yeah. so, like, I, I think that the Auburn-Yale Friday afternoon, it's in the bridge tip, which is 4.15 p.m. Eastern time. You know, like your early wave, counting oh, yeah. gets going, then the late wave. There's always like one game right in the middle before the late slate gets going that everyone's watching. I think Auburn-Yale is going to be your money line, alt line situation. Of the four games in the top half of this bracket, that's the one that has my attention the most. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Uh, that's that's going to be a really interesting one. I feel like I feel kind of similar uh, about Iowa State in the same way that you feel about Auburn. Like, you know, Iowa State, they get um, 15 seeds, South Dakota State, and we'll get to the bottom half of the bracket here in a little bit. But uh, Iowa State, a team that can just absolutely ravage you. They can beat down just about anyone. But also, uh, if they struggle on any given night, they're not making shots. Uh, it's not surprising at all. So alt line, money line. Auburn, Iowa State, two teams to watch out of this East region. Uh, which team or teams, Chip, do you see as potential bracket busters in the, in this top half of the bracket? Maybe like a Cinderella or a Cinderella hopeful. Uh, it feels weird to to call San Diego State, you know, a, a bracket buster, but I think they kind of fit uh, fit the description here as as a five seed. I don't think they're a Cinderella. Obviously, this is a team that literally went to the Final Four last year. Uh, but I think they're a dark horse to maybe make it out of this top region, which would be obviously bracket busting for everyone, in particular with with UConn up there. Uh, Brian Dutcher is a great coach, highest seeded team in the NCAA tournament field among the Mountain West. Went to the Final Four last year. Uh, any team or teams you like San Diego State, you like someone else, think that that could be a, a potential bracket buster in this top half of the bracket? Yeah, I don't see a lot of busting brackets here. But yeah, I don't either. Uh, yeah, I I see it mostly chalk, but I will say, for volatility's sake, if FAU can get past Boo Booey, which I'm not predicting, Dusty May's a hell of a coach. Yeah. Just saying that yeah. Dusty May's a hell of a coach. And, and like that that's how much I am stretching. I am telling you that if there's any bracket busting going on in the top of the East. It is going to be an FAU team that has not looked good for a long time taking down UConn. That, like, that's the kind of unexpected result that we'd be talking about here in the top of the East. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a good call. I think that's a good call. That would be super interesting, obviously. Vlad Golden versus Donovan Klingon. Um, man, it's, it, it stinks not being able to get South Florida in this NCAA tournament bracket. But Florida Atlantic, a very worthy team. Uh, that could could actually surprise some some well, teams. I think like, that's the thing is like we're yeah. talking about yeah, FAU. When playing. Uh, yeah, we're talking about FAU ceiling is good enough yep. to bust a bracket, but we also watch basketball with our eyes, and they have played <laughs> nowhere close to their ceiling. You know, for what well, since what was the it was the Illinois win or was it Arizona yeah. win earlier? When, I mean, they, it's been it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, so, if, if, if there's anything in the top half, that's what I would say. Yeah, I agree. All right. All right, let's move on to the uh, to the bottom half of the bracket here. Again, if you're following us on YouTube, we're breaking down the East region right now. Grab your bracket, follow along, follow us, fade us, do whatever you want to do. Um, the matchups in the bottom half of the bracket in the East region, we have number six seed BYU taking on number 11 seed Duquesne, the Dukes of, of Duquesne, number three seed Illinois, Matched up with number 14 seed Moorhead State. Number seven seed Washington State draws number 10 seed Drake. And at the very bottom of the bracket here in the East region, number two seed Iowa State draws number 15 seed South Dakota State. That is Iowa State coach TJ Otzelberger taking on, obviously, the, the school that he left, his former school in South Dakota State. Uh, which team or teams? Again, do you think underseeded, overseeded in this pod? I don't know. We may agree here. I think Iowa State is the number two seed is egregious. I think it was madness. I was shocked. It felt like the last few days leading up to Selection Sunday just like were not considered by the committee. Um, also feels like BYU as a six is um, is pretty interesting. Feel like they could have been a five or a four. What do you uh, what do you make of this? Underseeded and overseeded on the on this bottom half of the bracket. 
So I think Iowa State's rightly seated. I don't think they are rightly placed. Yeah, Iowa State yeah. at, I, Iowa State as A2, mm-hmm. I've got no problems with. Yeah, Iowa okay. State as the lowest two and thus crazy. getting kicked into UConn's region is crazy. I think I think yeah. Iowa State should have been the two seed with North Carolina in the West. I think yeah. that like that's because if Never mind. I don't want to get into the whole like non-conference strength of schedule. Should it matter? Should it not matter? Like that's it apparently that is, does. Yes. It North Carolina and Iowa State had the same record. Iowa State had more quad one wins, but Iowa State had more quad one opportunities because they played in the Big Twelve. When every single right. time you roll out of bed, as long as it's not apologies, Oklahoma State, then you like fall into a quad one opportunity. How um, dare you? North Carolina in the non-con played UConn. They beat Tennessee. They played Kentucky. I mean, they mm-hmm. they played some of the best teams in the country. And they were, like, yeah. even in the games they lost, they were competitive. So if you want to eye test this and say North Carolina is more, like, North Carolina is a one, but then I think Iowa State should have been the top two. Um, do you know, I'm going to tread lightly for uh, mm. for my friends for the, uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints. You know the BYU issue, right? Yeah, so explain explain that to us because I did see that floating around and I was not able to confirm it. But yes, explain the BYU situation. So there is um there there are certain um you know principles in terms of teams that are in the same conference cannot meet until the sweet 16. So you've got to move teams around. Sometimes a team gets bumped up a seed, sometimes a team gets bumped down a seed. You can't have them placed in the same spot. You know, you are looking to um, create some other, you know, little principles. And there is a principle that if it can be lined up, BYU does not draw the Friday Sunday because BYU does not hold school activities on Sunday. Right. So BYU could have been a five, but a five that might have had to play Friday, Sunday when there's a spot open in the East region where if you put BYU as the six there, they get a Thursday, Saturday and avoid having to play on Sunday. So I am, uh, I don't know. I, th- I think number one, number one, BYU is going to be playing at 1240, one of the first games of the day against a Duquesne team that just likes to slow it down and play good defense. I mean, you want to talk about some clash of styles that we've got right here. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. First thing right off the bat, if BYU comes out and hits their first, like, you know, hits four out of their first seven three-point attempts, then it's going to be night-night. The Dukes yeah. cannot keep up. But, like, let BYU get off to a slow start. It will be very difficult for them to be able to establish uh, a good rhythm right there in that first-round game. So besides the 5-6 thing, I just think that for BYU, it's a really tough uh, style opponent that they draw there with Duquesne. Um, I think that – I don't know if Drake being a 10 – is an over or an under seeding situation. That is certainly yeah. a spot we are not always used to seeing the Missouri Valley Conference champion, but Washington State Drake, I think, is the best game that we mm-hmm. have in the entire first round of the East region. And the those two coaches and those two teams, we've got so much versatility. We've got um, the ability to be able to kind of play the chess match and go back and forth. Um, I am very, very excited uh, for that late night Thursday game between Washington state and Drake. And then look, whoever wins that game could be dangerous for the cyclones on what you were saying earlier with the ceiling and the floor of Iowa state, either Washington state or Drake, maybe live to be able to take them down. Uh, I was trying to talk myself into Moorhead state right off the bat, but I kind of think Illinois is just on a, just I tried to, yeah, yeah, I Uh, uh, not right now. So bottom half of the bracket, I don't have a ton of seeding issues outside of the big picture. Iowa state thing. Drake is a little bit interesting. Washington state. Drake, I think is the best first round matchup. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Uh, bracket busters for you in this bottom half of the bracket. Um, you mentioned Duquesne BYU as, as a potentially interesting kind of clash of styles. Uh, that's the one I had circled, uh, a potential upset. Uh, it, it also feels like an alt line money line situation where, 
If BYU wins by like 35, wouldn't totally surprise me. But if Duquesne is in this down the stretch, that also wouldn't surprise me. BYU, by the way, um, you know, among teams in the NCAA tournament field, they take more three pointers um, compared to field goals than anyone in this in this NCAA tournament bracket. So they love three pointers. They rely on it heavily. Um, that has been very successful for this BYU team this season. Uh, but certainly, I, I think if they struggle in this game, you will start to see the old people kind of coming out of the woodwork and saying, oh, you live by the three, you die by the three. Whoa. And uh, that will be interesting to watch. Duquesne BYU 6-11 game. Very interesting. You like any bracket busters in this bottom half of the bracket? Oh, real quick on Duquesne. I'm glad you said old people because that's going to be a <laughs> fifth-year senior Duquesne guard, Day Day Grant. Just yeah. dribbling the ball, just keeping it out of your hands. Like, you know how you keep BYU from hitting three-pointers? You don't let them touch it. You limit the number of possessions in the game, then you limit the number of shots that they are fundamentally going to be able to get up. Um, yeah, I they've got, like, Duquesne has, a, I think it, ooh, let me reach deep into Jimmy Clark. Like, Day Day Grant, I think it's Day Day Grant and Jimmy Clark. It's two like senior guards day days. I know a fifth year and that's yeah. like Duquesne is just, all right, we're going to play really, really good defense. And we trust that these two guys are going to be able to like out execute and bring it home for us uh, coming down the stretch. And yeah. for bracket busters, uh, I'm, I'm just looking at whoever Iowa state would face, by the way, no upset for South Dakota state. This is not your father's South Dakota state. This is no, not a team that went 18 and zero in the summit league was it two years ago with Baylor Shireman? Well, guess what? Baylor Shireman's now with Creighton and this yes. team, I think went like 10 and six in league play or something like that. So don't, because the Jackrabbit, because Jackrabbits are fun to say, remember Jackrabbits, they are in us uh, because Jackrabbits are fun to say, doesn't mean that you should think that's the upset threat. The upset threat for the Cyclones. I think it's in the second round against the Washington state Drake winner. Totally agree with you. Um, that is exactly what I had written down. I think if Iowa State falls earlier than expected, it will not be in the first round. It will be against either Washington State um, or Drake. By the way, what's the what's the sound of a jackrabbit? Do they even make noises? Is that like a are they silent like normal? Okay, yeah. I mean, right? Isn't that what kind of what a rabbit sounds like? I mean, just imagine like a rabbit eating a carrot. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I'll have to Google it, but that sounds right. Do they can eat carrots? Bird call? Can we can we get an old KB bird call? For what? What was it? How do you do it? Ooh. Something like that. Ooh. 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 That's good. One time for the Florida Atlantic Owls, baby. That's right. One time for the one time. All right, let's go to the very bottom of this bracket here. Um, favorite first round matchup from this region. Mine personally is Iowa State versus South Dakota State. And I know we just talked about Iowa State. You know, they're going to be a heavy favorite. I wouldn't pick South Dakota State, uh, but that is my favorite first round pick from this entire East region. Um, I like all the games, obviously, and I'll be watching all the games, but the storylines in this one is are, are really fascinating. Uh, TJ Otzelberger obviously draws his old school in the first round. Iowa State, they have a great defense, can be a little bit volatile in terms of their floor slash ceiling just because it feels like can be kind of hit or miss on offense. Uh, they've been really good over the last month. And, and in fact, I think if you look at Bart Torvik, they're like top five in most metrics the last month. Um, I looked at scoring scoring averages across uh, all of college basketball. Iowa State is 97th in all of college basketball, 75.6 points per game. San Diego State ranks 98th, just behind Iowa State. They're at 75.5. So, you know, I don't think this will be a close game, but I'm excited to watch Otzelberger and the Cyclones just because, man, they stomped through the Big 12 tournament. They stomped Houston in the Big 12 title game. And this is a team right now that, you know, again, I'm probably not going to pick them to come out of the East region, but they are playing as well as just about anyone in the NCAA tournament field. And I think I'm excited to watch kind of this first round. Who, who's your favorite uh, first round matchup from any game, top or bottom half of this bracket in this in this region, Chipper. Yeah, that's gonna be Washington State Drake. I just think yeah. that we've got the the tightest gap. You know, it's probably like the most the most competitive gap outside of maybe FAU Northwestern, but you know, eight nine games that sort of comes as expected. So yeah, give me Washington State Drake 
uh, the back and forth right there as, as my favorite matchup. I like it. I like it. All right, let's move on to our final category here, and we'll put a bow on the East region. Name me one Cinderella squad you like, and then give me your Elite Eight and your region winner. I will go first, and I will let you do the courtesy of, of taking us out here. My Cinderella is going to be Drake as the 10th seed. Um, really excited to see Drake versus – that's Washington State in the first round, that 7-10 matchup. Um, then potentially Iowa State in the second round. We talked early, a little bit earlier about Iowa State potentially being a little bit volatile. They played very well the last month, but Drake in particular, um, a very good coach in, in, in Drake DeVries. Um, you know, they've got a lot of experience on this roster. Uh, very trendy, probably mid-major team uh, that will end up, you know, in, in a lot of brackets, I would imagine. My Elite Eight teams going to be UConn, Illinois, and I pick in UConn. I think UConn gets back to the Final Four. Um, what's your uh, What's your Cinderella pick? What's your Elite Eight teams? Who do you think comes out of the East Region Chipper? If you look at my expert bracket, you'll see that I've got a pretty chalky East Region. I think the best potential matchup that we could get would be in an Iowa State Illinois Sweet Sixteen. That'd be very tasty. Uh, the one team I have circled for potentially busting things up is the champions of the A10, Duquesne, and because yeah. great minds think alike, I also have UConn over Illinois in the Sweet Sixteen. And look, is that a unity lock? Yes, it is. All right. Let's go. Let's go. UConn Huskies. All right. We are going a little bit chalk here, but that is just fine. We've watched the UConn Huskies play basketball this season. They're a good basketball team. And uh, not surprising at all that we are both picking the UConn Huskies. Chip. Chip Monk. Great stuff. We are done with the East region, good sir. We are going to move on to the West region. If you're following along on YouTube, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're listening to this in podcast, audio version, thank you for subscribing. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Uh, we will catch you guys later. Be sure to check out the YouTube page for all the regional breakdowns. And we will catch you again real soon. Thank you.